All right, kindergarten friends, so now that we have learned about Robert and Deanna, you are going to get a piece of paper. It has a T going across it, one vertical line and one horizontal line drawn with Sharpie. And your paper is also going to be folded up. You can kind of see that there's a bunch of little folds. It kind of looks like a zigzag. And that way, it makes all of these little sections. So this is a section, all of these little rectangles that are made from those folds. So what we're gonna do to start is you are going to get a yellow oil pastel and you are going to start drawing lines that you have learned, lines or shapes that you have learned that um, you are going to put in these spaces. So maybe I'll start in this first rectangle and I'm going to draw maybe a zigzag line. And I'm going to stop when I get to this line. So I'm only filling up this little rectangle from here to here, because I have this line from the fold and I have this line from the Sharpie. Now I'm gonna pick another line, maybe a loop-de-loop -loop line, and I'm staying inside that little rectangle. Now maybe I'll do a castle line. And I see that Sharpie line coming up, so I'm gonna stop. And now I have another rectangle right here, so maybe Maybe now I'll kind of do a combination of lines. So maybe I'll do a spiral line with a wavy line. A spiral line and a wavy line. Maybe now I'll do some X's. All right, and look, now I've filled up this whole rectangle with all of these little rectangles in, inside. So inside of this huge rectangle, I had one, two, three, four, five little rectangles, which means I got to draw one, two, three, four, five lines. Now, when you're using your oil pastel, it's really, really important to press down pretty hard because we are going to paint over top of these and we have already learned that oil pastels act as a resist, which means the paint does not like to paint on top of the oil pastel, which means your lines will still show up even though we've painted on top of them. But they show up a lot better if you press down really, really hard with your oil pastel. So I'm gonna try that again here, maybe in this one, maybe I'll do a kitty cat ear line and I'm pressing down really hard. Maybe in this one, I just wanna do a couple straight lines. And you can even do shapes, so maybe I'll just do some squares in this little rectangle. And I think maybe I wanna do a zigzag line and then an X. A zigzag line and then an X. So you can combine different lines. So like this one I did swirl and a wavy, swirl and a wavy. This one I did zigzag X, zigzag X. Maybe this one I'll do X, O, X, O. X circle, X circle, right? Maybe in this one I'll do diagonal lines and squares. Diagonal lines and squares. But remember, don't go past the fold line and don't go over the Sharpie line. So I'm staying in these little rectangles that are already made for me. Now maybe I just want a whole line of circles. I'm still making sure to press really hard. I mean, I'm the teacher and my fingers are kind of hurting from how hard I am pressing. So make sure you're pressing pretty hard Okay, once my paper is all filled up, then I can get the paints for my table. I need to make sure that I get myself a paper towel to dry off my paintbrush. 
I'll get my paints for my table and a water bowl for my table and a paintbrush for myself. So there's lots of different paints on this uh, tray. There's lots of different colors. You can pick four. You can pick four colors because there's four big rectangles on your paper, right? Now I know there was a lot of little rectangles, but right now we're gonna look at just these four big ones that are sectioned off by these two lines. So one, two, three, four. So I can pick four colors. So I think maybe I'll do this blue, this orange, this green. <gasps> Am I gonna use yellow? Why can I not use yellow? Because I drew with yellow, that's right. And if I paint over it with yellow, then I won't be able to see my yellow lines. So I'm gonna pick a different color. I think I'm gonna use these four colors, this turquoise, purple, green, and orange. So I'm gonna push that up there so you can see while I'm painting. Remember, Remember, these are tempera cakes, which is kind of like watercolors, which means you need to put a pretty big puddle in your paints first to get them wet. They will not work if they are not wet. And I'm going to stir that up. Remember, you have to mix your colors really, 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 really well to make your colors show up nice and bright. If your colors aren't showing up very bright, it means you probably didn't mix your colors in very well. So I'm gonna start by painting this first rectangle. And you can see, because I pressed down pretty hard with my oil pastel, my oil pastel lines are showing up through the paint. I'm going to make sure to paint all the way to those black lines and fill in that space completely. I'm making sure to go back and see if I missed any spots. And one thing that might help you a little bit before you paint, since our paper was folded up quite a bit, it might help you to kind of stretch it and flatten it out a little bit before you paint. Because it helps if your paper is a little more flat. All right, so there's my first color. I'm gonna set that aside. Let's look at what it looks like if I don't blend my color in very well. Now do you see, that's a pretty light blue. It's really, really, really light. But if I mix my paint in with my water really, really well, look at that nice bright blue that shows up. Really, really nice. I'm gonna go right to that line. I kind of like to paint right next to the line first, and then fill it in. I don't wanna to scrub too hard with my paintbrush. If I'm scrubbing my paintbrush on my paper really, really hard, it's gonna rub off my oil pastel lines and then we won't be able to see them. So I'm painting pretty nicely and lightly. That looks really nice. So now I can set that aside and get my next color. I'm gonna make sure to rinse my brush off really, really well in my water and then test it on my paper towel to make sure it's all the way cleaned off. If I see that there's no color on my paper towel, that means my paintbrush is clean. So that means I can get my next color.
sometimes if you feel like you are you press down really hard with your oil pastels but still your lines aren't showing up very well it might mean that you have too much paint it might mean that you need a little bit more water mixed in with your paint So if you feel like you're still covering up your lines a little too much, try adding a little more water to your paint. All right, my friends, so that's day one of our project. Um, please make sure to press down really hard with your oil pastel. Stay inside those little tiny rectangles when you're drawing your lines. Then make sure to pick four different colors for your paints and stay in those big rectangles when you are painting your paints. Once you're all finished, you can carefully carry this over to the drying rack. Okay, kindergarten friends. So last time we drew our lines and painted our papers. This time, we are going to add our letters. So, you are going to get the letters for the word love, L-O-V-E. Now, the L is backwards because what we're gonna do is we are going to cut these out and then we're gonna flip them over to glue them down so we don't see our black lines. So that means our L will be forward. And the rest of these, they all look the same whether they're forwards or backwards. So, what we're gonna do is we are going to cut these out on the black line. The black line is your road and your scissors are your car. So make sure your car is staying on that road. When the line turns, you need to turn your paper. My trick for cutting with scissors is your scissors stay still. They only go up and down to open and close. Your other hand is going to move the paper. So you can see my scissors are staying still. This hand is moving the paper. Okay, there's my L. We're gonna use a heart for an O. Do your very, very best to stay on that black line. The E is the trickiest one to cut out. So make sure you are always staying on this black line. There's a lot of turns. So just put your scissors all the way up to that corner and then turn your paper. All right, so now it's time to glue these down. Before I glue each one of these down, I'm going to look at the example on the board so I make sure that I'm putting my letters in the right rectangle and I'm making sure that I'm making them so they are facing the right direction. So, here's my example on the board. Let me zoom out a little. Here's my example from the board. So I'll start with my L. I'm gonna look at my example and I'm gonna see, oh right, the L faces this way and I always want my black lines to be on the back. So you can see my black Sharpie lines on the edges. I'm gonna make sure that that is the side that I put my glue on. That's really important, my friends, because the black lines are not very pretty. We don't really wanna see those on our finished artwork. So I'm gonna open up my glue bottle I'm seeing the side with the black lines and I'm going to put a few dots of glue. You don't need too much. And I'm gonna look at the board, making sure I'm putting my, my L in the right rectangle. Now it just happens that both of these rectangles are green. Uh, that was just an accident. I didn't mean for that to happen. Maybe your first rectangle is gonna be orange or pink or 
uh, whatever other color. So make sure that even if your first rectangle is a different color, here, we can do this. There. So now my first rectangle is orange, but this is still the first one, so I'm gonna make sure to put my L in that first rectangle. I'm gonna put it right in the middle. I'm gonna press it down pretty well. Again, making sure it's facing the right direction. Now I'll get my heart for my O. I'm gonna find the side that has the black lines on it. Put a few dots of glue and then put it right in the middle of that rectangle. Now it's time for my V. I'm gonna find my side with my black lines. <clears throat> I'm going to look at the example on the board. Which rectangle does my V need to go into? Looks like it's this one. All right, last one, and the E is tricky because even if you have it facing the right way, meaning you have the black lines on the back, you can still accidentally put it so it's facing backwards, which we don't wanna do. So make sure, first of all, you're finding your side with your black lines, putting your glue on the, that side. Then I'm going to make sure to look at the example on the board and make sure that my E is facing the same direction. So you can see my E is going that way on both mine and the example on the board. If it's facing this way, I already know that that's not right because that is not the same way that it's facing on the example on the board. So I'm gonna flip it around, put it right in the middle. Now all of them are on there. So now I'm just gonna go back and press them in to make sure they're stuck down really well. If you see that a piece is sticking up, you can just put a little more glue underneath. And there you go. There is my finished Robert Indiana Love Artwork.